It's the secret of mask in a ring. Inside my Cocoa Puffs. What a great ring. It's like magic. One flip, the helicopter becomes a jet plane. You won't believe your eyes. Mask Magic Rings, one of five in specially marked boxes of Cocoa Puffs. In 2086, two peaceful aliens journeyed to Earth, seeking our help. In return, they gave us the plans for our first hyperdrive, allowing mankind to open the doors to the stars. We have assembled a team of unique individuals to protect Earth and our allies, courageous pioneers committed to the highest ideals of justice and dedicated to preserving law and order across the new frontier. These are the adventures of the Galaxy Rangers. Anyone? Is the Tri D working yet, Goose? Thanks, Buzz. I heated it myself. Check it out. Yeah, you fixed it, my Goose Man. Tri D video is my favorite show. Now, a new group that's getting a lot of attention here and on many of the League planets it's the Slaver Lords with their hit single Psycho Crystal. Yo, check this out. you really believe this? I find it rather catchy. I'd like to catch them. Will someone please shut him down? Just who are these guys? Galaxy Rangers, I've got four special psycho crystals with your names on them. There's something familiar about that voice.
Great gig, man. Awesome. Thanks, guys. But we're through playing dives. Yep, from now on, we are star status. These fake psycho crystals add a lot to the act. It's turning out just like you planned, Nimrod. Of course it is. The Rangers will soon be the laughingstock of the galaxy. The disc and video sales will make us rich. More autographs. Ah, oh, they love us. One at a time. Oops. Offense? <laughs> it's the real McCoy. Beat it, guys. This gig is over. Set for stun. You like an autograph? Meet your new manager. And now. Uh, there's been a mistake. I'm telling you. I'm just a boy in a rock and roll band. Your heinous. Yeah, I mean your highness. I'll change the act if it displeases you. Don't trifle with me, Thurman. No offense. There is an upcoming battle of the bands at the Orion Arena. You are going to enter the contest. You covet the prize? Some foolish trophy and a recording contract? No, our prize will be the audience. Huh? Five thousand humans will attend that contest, and you will see to it that they end their journey in my psycho crypt. But I have nothing against humans in general. Silence! How am I going to talk 5,000 humans into coming to your place? You won't talk to them. You will use this. Cool, baby. What is it? Unfortunately, the effect is short-lived. But with it, you will be able to control your audience. And if I refuse? You won't. Three of my choice slaver lords will be your backup musicians. Your slavers? I can't gig with those guys. You better understand me, Nimrod. You will serve me, one way or another. Whoa! Well, I sure hope they can lip sync. Gee, Larry, Ogle really knows how to throw a bash, doesn't he? Except Larry turned the cake into a rock pie. <laughs> Shut up and keep cleaning. <laughs> Demons are so messy. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hey. What is it, Larry? What did you find? There's a battle of the bands at the Orion Arena. Mogul would sure be impressed if we won that. But how could we win? We're not musicians! We don't have to be musicians. We are magicians! This, Rangers, is the situation. The Orion Arena is in the empty zone, not too far from the Queen's realm, in galactic terms. And passenger transports have already left Earth for the journey. Five thousand humans, almost within the Queen's grasp. I don't like it. We're suspicious of the entire setup. Q-Ball? The Orion has their own security force, but we want you to go undercover to keep an eye on things. You're a new group on the music scene, the Galaxy Rangers. A rock band? You're kidding. I love it. Relax, Zack. It's our only way to get backstage, and you won't have to do any actual playing. Doc's keyboard here is actually a computerized music synthesizer. He'll run the show. Except for your vocals, Goose and Zack, all you'll have to do is stand there and look good. What about our badges, our blasters? We've got some special surprises in that department. Let's rock and roll, dudes. War, bow! 
I'm going to enjoy this. It, Captain. <laughs> Goose, set your axe on stun. Musicians only. Lighten up, bro. We're the Galaxy Rangers. Pressing room 14. Say, man, where are the slaver lords at? Room 7, just above yours. Solid. Uh, right on. I sure hope you guys can remember your parts. Thanks, sir. Can you remember your, your parts, Nimrod? Highness, I didn't know you were a music lover. After you have switched on the mind net and the audience is, shall we say, captivated, my agents will take control of the bridge of the space arena. My slaver cruisers will be in position to transport the humans to my psycho crypt. I am your servant. For the moment. Galaxy Rangers, you're up next! Come on, while Goose is checking out the competition. Hey dude, any charge bits for my axe? Inside. Thanks, man. Nice shave. Nimrod the cat. Hold up! It's Nimrod. Huh? huh? Nimrod. Nimrod! All right, we'll deal with him after we deal with this. And now give a warm welcome to a new band from Earth. Exploding the charts with their big hit, the Galaxy Rangers. I hope you guys rehearse. I'll take the solo, bud. Larry, you never gonna win. Do something, Larry. The keyboard man's controlling everything, but I'll fix them. Kareem, Abdul, Jabbar. Yeah! Hey! Get back in there! up there, Doc? I don't know. Gremlins in my CDU or something. Didn't matter. Goose pulled us through. Yeah, my Goose Man. There he is. Nimrod! Oh no, what are you doing here? Did you come to clean up my lyrics? Star status doesn't get you off the ten most wanted list, Nimrod. You're under arrest. And you've just won a one-way ticket to the Queen Psycho Crypt. The mine net device hit the deck. <laughs> ha! Now worship your queen. You took the words right out of my mouth. An unexpected bonus. Disarm them and place them under heavy guard. 
5,000 humans and the Galaxy Rangers in one fell swoop. Hey, Larry, even they have magic. Yeah, the Queen's magic. And now, Nimrod and the Slaver Lord! But Highness, you've got the Rangers, isn't that enough? Use the mind net. Oh. Listen to that crowd, they're mesmerized. I've got a plan. We'll free the Rangers and they'll put an end to Nimrod's act. Well, Larry, talk about showstoppers. Get me some popcorn. I'm the double. Yes, yes sir, Highness. Walk this way. Open says me. Oh, a wise guy. Re, uh, let's get us one. Returns again, Storm Palace. <gasps> what happened? Everybody all right? Nimrod used the mind net device on us. If he uses that on the audience. Galaxy Rangers, we're on. Good show, man. Beauty. Hey, man, you got a backstage pass? We're commandeering this vessel in the name of the Queen. She's not my queen, pal. Ah, cool! <laughs> Show's over, Nimrod. No encore. The Rangers, you made it worse, Larry. We'll never win. The crowd loves them. Ah! Awesome. That's what I call a battle axe. Don't shoot! The Queen's crown agents have taken over the bridge. Her slaver cruisers are moving in. Come with me. Retreat! But take him. He has betrayed me. Oh, little Queenie. They've taken Nimrod. So what? Chance. Let's show them how to get down. Ladies and humanoids, Larry and the demon. Heavy message here. Listen to the words, I'll sing them clear. Magic is forever. 
Magic's forever, magic's forever. Our diary's so forever. My leash, our cruisers are within range. Excellent. Oh. Makes us even. Should we go after him? Why bother? He'll turn up. There aren't many places he can hide. Magic forever. Magic forever. The gremlins in your CDU? That's my guess. So they pulled us out of the mind that spell. Yeah, but do we want them winning a recording contract? We just got finished with the Slaver Lords. Where is my spell book? I, I, that is a we were just borrowing it to win this battle of the bands. <laughs> you haven't even finished cleaning up my room. But master... Silence! I'm taking you home! <laughs> well, um, in the light of the disappearance of two of our top groups, I'm gonna have to announce the winners by default! The Galaxy Rangers! Zack, a chance for a recording contract! Cue ball will flip! to reveal two worlds of battle action from Galoob. The Keebler elves twist two crunchy snack sticks together to make Crunch Twist double crunchy, double tasty. 
and hearty potato, nacho cheese, cheddar, and toasted corn. Great strength, great sound, great shape, great taste. It's snacking. From Keebler. Hershey, Hershey, Hershey. It's a fun one. Hershey, Hershey, Hershey. Chocolate fun, pure milk, chocolate, delicious and smooth. Oh, if you don't believe me, I'll prove it to you. When you take a bite, take a bite, oh, you'll say I'm right. Hershey, 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 it's a fun one. Oh, Hershey, 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 oh, chocolate fun. Get up, get up, be gonna be two down. Two down between the gum fighter and rock jaw Jim. Strongest dog in town. Gumfighter. At Gumfighter's Chew the Delicious Hubba Bubba, it starts soft and stays soft. Chew after chew after chew. To start sharing. It's gum jam. Looks like rock jaw got rock jaw. Hubba <laughs> Bubba with amazing no stick bubbles. It starts soft, stays soft. Earth, the 23rd century, a time of robots and aliens, and of destruction and terror. Can the Galactic Patrol, defender of the United Planets, stop the evil computer, Umbra? You bet they can. Meet Rob Simmons, the secret inventor of Feisty Ono, Mighty Tor, Versatile Bort, Elusive Boo, Bold, the master of the elements, and Crunch, the metal muncher. Super robots forging together at Rob's command to form Mighty Torbots, champion of the universe. Galaxy, the Milky Way. It is the 23rd century, and mankind has reached the stars. Earth has become the headquarters of the Galactic Patrol, the police force of the United Planets. And life is anything but dull. Within the concealed headquarters of the Galactic Patrol, Rundu, the patrol commander, sees the situation and realizes that this is a job for mighty Orbots. Rob, come in. Urgent. A starship is caught in the meteor swarm. We need mighty Orbots. Roger, Rondu. Oh, no. Get the beam car and meet me at Rendezvous 7. Rob Simmons, inventor of Mighty Orbots, calls his team to action. Hurry! Orbots, activate! Responding to Rob's call, the five robots burst from their underground recharge chambers. First comes the Mighty Tor. Next, the shape-changing Bort. Bow, with her power over the elements, follows. And then comes Boo, mistress of illusion. And finally, the all-purpose disposal unit, Crunch. That little cutie Ono, watchful mother hen of the Orbots.
Rob activates his Omni suit and is transformed into the Orbot's commander. Orbots, unite! Okay, guys, let's go. Move it, guys. That ship's in bad shape. Too many of them, Rob. We can't be everywhere at once. Oh, yes, we can, Tor. Orbots, separate! Separation complete. Okay, gang, use the old Meteor Madness play. Meteor Madness. Uh, let's see, which one is that? Don't strain your circuit, sport. Here's a hint. It starts like this. With a little of this. It builds up to this. Oh. oh, 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 right. And then I do this. Okay, Rob. The asteroids are almost cleared. Oh, look. This is Dragos and Drag Ship. It is? Wow! They're the biggest rock group in the galaxy! Mighty Orbots to Starship. You're out of the meteoroid swarm now. Do you need any help with repairs? Negative, Mighty Orbots. But as a token of our gratitude... We hope you'll accept free tickets to our concert tonight. Wow! We'll be there! Thanks! They'll be in for quite a show if they do. Yeah, like their last show. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looks like Mighty Orbot saved that starship. A pity Rob isn't here to see it. You know how those robotics engineers are, Father? He's probably analyzing some complicated formula. Something's missing. Some vital ingredient. I know. Mustard. Oh, no. What's that? 
lunch. Oh, no! You already had today's lunch. I know. This is tomorrow's lunch. Oh, no! All you ever say is, oh, no! Oh, no! It's not my fault. You built me. Right. To help me, not to nag me. Oh, no! You programmed me. I sure did. And now I'm going to reprogram you into saying, oh, yes. Oh, no! <laughs> Works every time. Rock and Rule is my favorite. I hope they do it at the concert tonight. Just noise, if you ask me. Gee, I wonder if Boo would like to go to the concert with me. <laughs> yeah. Go with me. Not a chance, guys. They've only got video receptors for those rock star creeps. If I ever met Dragos and Drax, I can't think of what I'd say. I can. Don't worry, guys. They've just got a harmless crush on Dragos and Drax. Listen, 20 weight. Just because Rob built you first doesn't mean you can boss me around. I am not moving till I say it's time to go. Time to go. These guys are so hip. They're triple jointed. Think I'll do an extra hour's recharge. I may need it tonight. I think it's harmless. How, how about you? Yeah. Sure. Harmless. Unfortunately for our heroes, it seems that Dracos and Drax are not at all harmless. The Shadow Star, a hollow planet so huge, it has its own inner sun to warm it. This is the headquarters of Shadow, the most evil organization in the universe. Here in the massive Shadow Fortress, Umbra, the ruler of shadow, is spinning yet another in a long series of webs for mighty Orbots. <sighs> Umbra to Dracos and Drax. Report the progress of your operation. All is in readiness, Lord Umbra. At your command, we will test the magnetic monster and destroy one of Earth's cities. The command is given. Proceed. Our music will create the greatest menace their world has ever seen. Dragos and Drax alien music has created a monster. Test is successful, Lord Umbra. Excellent. You two have played your parts well. The galaxy believes you are music superstars. No one suspects you are agents of Shadow. It is the perfect disguise. Then we can proceed with step two? Yes. And after the Dragos and Drax concert, Earth defenses will be destroyed, along with mighty Orbots. On the moon, the eager fans pour into Lunar Hall to see the Dragos and Drax concert. I can't wait to see Dragos and Drax. I wish we could meet them face to face. I've got an idea. Use your invisibility power to make us scarce. Now, come on. Oh, I don't think we should. Hi, guys. Where'd you two come from? That doesn't matter. The big question is, where we're going. 
after the show. Oh. Hamsgray, ladies. Call your Chet's brother. These two are members of the Galactic Patrol. I know I don't want trouble. But we do want mighty Orbots. And maybe they know something about the big guy. Uh, tell you what, girls. We'll do a number right now, just for you. All right. Bo, what's happening? I, I don't know. Dragos and Drax hypnotic music has put Bo and Boo into a trance. Now, you two wait right there like good little robots. And when we finished our gig out there, you'll tell us whatever you know about mighty Orbots. And now, the hottest thing in the galaxy since the last supernova... Dracos and Drax music once again begins to form the magnetic monster. I don't know if the girls will want us to join them, Tor. So what? We don't take no for an answer. What are you, anyway? A robot or a mouse? A robot. Robot. So am I. I think. Never mind what I am. What's that? I don't know. But it looks even meaner than me. It's magnetic. And we're metal. And that's a bad combination. Yeah, bad. Real bad. Made of magnetic waves, the monster feeds on metal, growing larger and larger. Soon it will be big enough to attract all the metal on Earth, leaving the planet defenseless. Long suckers, this has been a shadow production. Wow, what a finish! The whole stage is blasting off! Shadows using rock and roll is nothing sacred. Dracos and Drax are getting away, but not if Dia can help it. Meanwhile, Bo and Boo have been taken aboard Draco's and Drax's ship. Wow, it must have been some night. I don't remember a thing. Okay, ladies, tell us where we can find Mighty Orbots. Mighty Orbots? Never heard of him. Come on, fellows. Lighten up. Here, I'll help by turning off the gravity. Hey! Cut it off! Look out! Oh, what, what? What's happening? <laughs> Are you two robots all right? Yeah! Uh, we gotta run. We got some, um, uh, uh, paperwork to do. Fine. I'll turn these shadow agents over to headquarters. Come on! Take your best shot! Hey! No fair! Tar! Buddy! Don't get, uh, get me mad, pal. I'm warning you. Well. Tor to Rob, we've got company with a magnetic personality. We're on our way. I 
wonder where the guys are. What in the galaxy is that thing? Whoa! Welcome to the party. Stick around. That monster's made out of magnetic waves. There's nothing we can do. We're metallic. It's got us cold. Cold? That's it. Sub-zero cold weakens electromagnetism. We need at least 500 degrees below zero. Where are we going to find any place that cold? Leave it to me. Okay, gang, we've only got one shot. It'll take everything we've got. Let's give this thing the old heave-ho! Keep going, guys. Going where? To the rings of Saturn. They're cold enough to put this thing on ice. stunned it. Let's break free before it comes to. Orbots, unite! Sing the monster toss and go for the gold! Sensors tell me the magnetic monster is no more. This must be mighty Orbot's doing. Somehow, someday, they will pay for this. And while Umbra broods over his defeat, the Orbot relax after a job well done. Where are you gals off to now? To another concert, of course. Disaster areas playing on Mars. Yeah? Well, how'd you both like to be escorted by a real hero? Great! Come on, Tor! What did I tell you guys? Style! That's the ticket.
this message. The new Legoland Firehouse won. You can build the firehouse and even close the door. The building's only started because there's more and more and more. The roof can make your chopper blades to get you in the air. The sides can make a fireboat in case you're floating there. And when you've built what's on the box, it's time for something new. Dream it up's the best part of Legoland and you. There are 26 town sets you can collect, each sold separately. Firehouse One is part of the Legoland Town Collection and has hundreds of bricks for building from Lego Systems. Let's lighten up Three Musketeers Take off and lighten up On a soft and puffy Smooth and fluffy Cloud of chocolate pleasure Three Musketeers Let's lighten up Come on, let's lighten up You can take a flight With a chocolate bite Three Musketeers So delicious and delightful A chocolate cloud in every bite Ooh, Lighten up On a chocolate cloud Lighten up TNT Racers, each sold separately. Just push them in, then blast them off for fast racing action and high flying stunts. And the harder you slam, the faster they go. T and T Racers are dynamite. Dynamite! Six racers in all. T and T Racers, each sold separately with its own launcher from Tonka. Land Shark. The mighty Land Shark will have Mechanic for lunch. He-Man for Land Shark vehicle, Skeletor, Mechanic, and He-Man figures each sold separately. Help! Help! Land Shark, Land Shark. Help! He-Man! Land Shark, Land Shark. Abraham, Lockjaw, Land Shark. Land Shark. Land Shark vehicle, new from the Masters of the Universe collection, not for use with some figures. Action figures each sold separately. From Mattel. This is humiliating. This is a direct order of the chairman of the board. Stop complaining. Here comes our beloved chairman now. I know you're all totally grossed out to be here, but it's my birthday, so I'm going to have a party. Why aren't you geezers having a good time? <gasps> Why can't you guys just lighten up and enjoy yourselves? Oh, I can't stand it. This place is like a prison. I hate it. I want some excitement. Don't cry, Astoria. It's my party and I'll cry if I want to. Dark and silent. Come and see it. This is Powerglide. The Decepticons are attacking Hybrid Technologies Corporation. They must be after some secret plans. Or maybe some new fuel they've invented. Or maybe they're going to kidnap all the company's top scientists. Or, huh? They're after a girl. It's hero time. Let go of me, you. You. Don't you touch that girl. Stay back. Hey, kid. Grab the rope. Powerglide. Superb aerial 
opportunity. Truly a worthy adversary. <laughs> Watch what you're doing, will you? <sighs> So sit still and let me get on with it. He has eluded us. We must keep searching. I think we ditched him. Wow, that was intense. <laughs> Who are you? Powerglide's the name. Well, whoever you are, I think you're completely the greatest. Uh, thanks! Now listen... Oh, I want to go flying again. Aw, oh, come on! Will you shut up and listen? I gotta know why those goons were after you. Who are you? I'm Astoria Carlton Ritz, chairman of the board of Hybrid Technologies. You run high tech? Yeah, see, like my father died, okay? And he left the company to me. We've got to find out why they want you. I want to go flying. I'll send you flying. According to this data, Astoria isn't allowed access to high-tech research labs or equipment, even though she runs the company. There must be some reason why the Decepticoons tried to nab her. Maybe they just wanted to hold her hostage in exchange for some secret information. Yeah, but what information? That's what bothers me. So, you had a run-in with the Decepti creeps, huh? Yeah. Too bad I wasn't there. I'm always ready to rescue a girl as pretty as you. Mm. What do you know about Power Glide? Oh, he's okay. Kind of a blowhard, if you know what I mean. I think he's wonderful. You do? Oh, wow. He's tall, he's handsome, he's shiny, <laughs> and he can fly. Yeah, well, there's a few things he can't do, you know. What are you doing? Terrific. Hey! What's the matter? Hey, like I can't help it if your junk's all defective. No wonder your own company won't let you near any of their equipment. Yeah, I guess me and machines don't get along too well. I can personally attest to that. Come on. I've been given the lucky task of escorting you back to our main headquarters. I'm hungry. I absolutely gotta have something to eat. Why does everything always happen to me? You failed to capture the girl? We had not counted on Power Glide's interference. You are supposed to be the most powerful jets in the galaxy, and you were beaten by a pipsqueak Autobot plane? Please, let us try to find her again. You will not try to get her. You will get her, or I'll have you all melted down for scrap. Astoria, we've got to get... No, wait. I want to do that. Boy, this is better than running that stupid old company any day. Astoria, we've got to get you out of here. It's dangerous. <laughs> what are you talking about? We're on a merry-go-round for crying out loud. Okay, so, like, what do I want to do now? I don't care what you want to do. We're going to the volcano. Let go of me! Let go! Don't you touch my necklace. Hey... What's the matter? Power Glide, my dad gave me this before he died. He made me promise never to take it off. I'm sorry. Real sorry. It's okay. You didn't know. But now we've got to... Go. We've come for the girl. And we will get the girl or else. Transformers will return after these messages. We now return to the Transformers. Storia. Yeah. Run! Even the three of you can't beat one of me.
Transmitting coordinates now! This place is like nowhere. Yeah, it ain't exactly the garden spot. Hey, you're hurt. It's nothing. Nothing? It's totally severe. You could get sand yeah. in it or something. No, you're a real pain in the afterburners, you know that? You know, you don't have to be Mr. Macho all the time, okay? Just let me help. You're like a big baby sometimes. I mean, like, I care about you. You saved my life. Of course, you wouldn't feel anything like that about me. Of course not. You're a robot. You're above all those kinds of things. Well, maybe I kind of, sort of, possibly feel that I think you're a... as I can. I can't just lie around here while that girl's in the hands of Megatron's goons. This is a delicate procedure. Look, I feel fine. Get back here. I'm not done. Is my wing fixed? Can I fly? Well, yes, but then you're done. Any word from the Deceptic Creeps? Not a peep. They've got her, Prime. Why don't they ransom her? Maybe they don't want a ransom. Maybe she's got something they want. Like what? I can't say. We're still completely in the dark about Megatron's plan. Correction. Sky Spy has detected unusual atmospheric disturbances over the North Atlantic. The source is 10 miles above sea level. Sounds like the Decepticons have some kind of suborbital station. Then that's where they've taken Astoria, and that's where I'm going! Oh, I let that little brat down once, and I'm not gonna give up till I find her! The energy transductor is now fully operational, Megatron. Excellent! As soon as I find out what that girl knows, we can turn the Earth's electromagnetic field into raw energon. You got any burgers in this joint? Silence. You guys are like the worst hosts. Tell me what you know and you will be released. I don't even know what you're talking about. Before your father died, he gave you high-tech energy formula. If you say so. I do, and I want it now. Hey, like, don't be so hostile, okay? Tell me what you know. All I know is that you're a complete and total utter... Silence! Since you won't give me the formula willingly, there are always other ways. 
The psychoprobe is capable of extracting all the information from a human's mind. I'll give you one last chance. Tell me what you know. The psychoprobe is not a pleasant experience. Go blow a circuit, man. Have it your way, then. Energize the psychoprobe. Transformers will return after these messages. We now return to the Transformers. Well, subject's mind completely empty. Impossible! Computer error. Searching for a problem. Hey, I forgot to tell you. Me and machines don't get along too well. Especially slime ball machines like you. What in the world's that? Problem corrected. Very well. Activate. See? I told you. I do not believe this! Mechanical error. Don't know how long I can take this. But I've got to get through for a story. They keep slipping off. Hold them in place if you have to. I must get that formula. Ready. The psycho probe will put 90,000 volts through your brain. It is an excruciating experience. Will you tell me what you know? All this waiting around, that's what's excruciating. I mean, I'm starving for crying out loud. When are you guys gonna feed me? That's what I want to know. Your dumb machine, like, doesn't even work, and... Enough! storm. Maybe something metal would short-circuit it. Nothing. Well, sorry, Dad, but I've got to chuck the formula in order to save him. Fixed it perfectly. What could have gone wrong? 
you. You're the problem. Get out of here. You're jinxing the controls. Oh, no. I'm staying with you. to sock you one. Hey, we're like still heading downward. But of course, get in. Well, at least we all got away with our holds in one piece. And as for the girl in the falling sky platform, well, that's Power Glide's problem. Correction. Problem is ours. Energize the force fields. What force fields? <laughs> So what were the Decepticons after, anyway? Oh, just that necklace my father gave me. You never make any sense, you know that? Yeah. Well, I gotta be going. Uh, uh, next time I'm in town, would it be okay if I, uh, looked you up? That would be wonderful. <laughs> you're wonderful. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, you're not so bad yourself, kid. You really mean it? Well, uh, sure. <laughs> Now, who would have believed it? Power Glide shot down by Cupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Which one of you wants to be the first to get his circuits punched out? The Transformers will return after these messages. The story of Soft Batch, the cookies so soft they taste like they're right from the oven. You know, Mom, some people call our Soft Batch cookies homemade. They're elf-made. Just because we elves make Soft Batch cookies soft and chewy, like cookies right from the oven in eight yummy flavors, there's no need to call them homemade. I'm sure folks meant it as a compliment. Keebler Soft Batch cookies. Oatmeal raisins, sugar, peanut butter, and chocolate chip. So soft, they taste like they're right from the oven. has cooked for lunch today. Uh, voila! Filet of soul. Uh, uh, how about a nice uh, club sandwich? <laughs> do kids like it, Newt? And eat raw spaghetti you can eat with a spoon. Uh-oh, spaghetti -o. And spaghetti are more than just delicious. They're nutritious. Go-Bot Command Center. Your parents put it together. Oh. 
You can change it to a Landwalker and a mighty fortress. Non-volt battery not included. Gobot sold separately. Enemy Gobot attacking! Now it has dramatic control! Leader One! Try and conquer the world now! You are grounded, Coptor! The Gobot Command Center. Leader One and Coptor each sold separately. From Tonka. We used to be four ordinary teenagers. Until one day, we met some new friends from out of town. They were called Dinosaucers. My friends and I became the secret scouts, allies to these dinosaurs from outer space, and joined in their battles against Genghis Rex and the evil Tyrannos. The dinosaurs are leaving, Bossasaur! Well, follow them! of karate are simple. Yielding is power. Gentle turns away strong. You're putting me on, right, Ryan? Try me, Tricero. And you really think you can break bricks with your bare hands, David? We did it in class. Karate is a defense, Demetro, never an attack. Yeah! Have it your way, then. What? <laughs> Here I come! Hey! Hey! Wow! I'd like to see you do that again. How did you learn to do such things? I told you, we've been taking karate lessons. Hmm. Who invented this, uh, karate? Well, uh... Nobody invented it. It's from Japan. Japan must be a very exceptional place. Exceptional? Haven't you guys ever seen a Brucey Wan movie? He's the greatest karate master ever! Hey! -ya! Yeah! Ha! These Japanese have karate and movies? Yeah! Haven't you ever heard of Gorgonzola? The cheese? No! The monster! He's so big he makes you guys look like shrimps. Shrimps? I'd say we'd better learn more about this Japan and this karate. That's just what I was thinking. I'm telling you, that kid broke the bone in two with his bare hands. Like this. <laughs> To master karate, you need a teacher, a sensei-saurus. The dinosaurs have discovered a method of destruction using only their arms. Yes, we are in danger of losing the arms race. Unless you find a sensei-saurus, the Tyrannos must learn karate. But a sensei-saurus? I don't even know where they spawn. <laughs> Find one! Y yes sir Look, Ryan! They've got Kramer versus Gorgonzola. All right. Isn't this the one where they fight over custody of Tokyo? Flying fists of the karate dragon meet the lightning hands of the Taekwondo devils. Hey, what about that? Learn karate with Chuck No Wrist and his karate caballeros. Maybe it could teach the dino some karate. No way. That guy's just a show off, not a real sensei. Come on, I can't wait to see these movies. I'll never find a sensei at this rate. We all want money. And all Rex gave me was four fifty and change and a bus token. This is hopeless. Land 
karate with Chuck Norris and his karate caballeros. This is it! He's not a real live sensei, but he'll do. Isn't Brucey Wan the greatest? Isn't Gorgon Zola the greatest? <laughs> I had no idea there were such huge dinos here on Earth. He's just a special effect. Uh, he's... he's the big brother I never had. Dinos, I suggest we learn about the country of Japan in person. All right! Karate is a mental discipline. So if you think hard, you'll punch hard. Think punch, think punch, think punch, think punch. Think so you'll notice the differences. The principle of karate is uh, use whatever force your attacker sends to you. If he pushes, you pull. If he pulls, push back. Uh, you will see this truth now. Starako and Cairo, attack. <laughs> Our mastery of karate will mop up this planet with those dino suckers. Uh, when do we meet Gorgonzola, huh? I just gotta see him in person. Sit tight, Bonehead. Remember, these folks have never seen a dino saucer before. Disturbance. A disturbance? This is wonderful. Which new American monster movie are you advertising? Uh, uh, well, let's see. We're dinosaurs, and we want to meet Gorgonzola. The dinosaurs meet the Gorgonzola? Zorgi, we it. Come with me. Welcome to Tow Truck Studios, dinosaurs. I am Soji Yoshikawa, your host. A great honor to meet you. 
Oh, Your costumes and the makeup are incredible. Here at the Putrak, we make many kinds of movies. Who are those guys? Well, that's the cast of our new fantasy action picture, Snow White and the Seven Samurai. What I want to know is, when do we meet Gorgonzola? Huh? huh? I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> I mean, uh, well, I think you're the greatest. He's just a machine, Bonehead. Don't you talk that way about him. What are you doing here? You are ruining the scene. We don't need you until three o'clock. Mitsura-san, uh, let me introduce... Huh? And what are you doing in those ridiculous costume? But these aren't our actors. Oh, they're the dinosaurs from America. Not our actors, but they are perfect. How would you like to be in a Gorgonzola movie? Would we? You bet we would. Wow, won't it be great to be in a Gorgonzola movie? Remember, karate is a defensive art. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's what you think. Huh? Oh! I may be a blind old man, but my ears are quite good. You is defensive. You lower your guard. Let us proceed with the lesson. The wood is dead. It can do nothing. Is it live? It can do anything. Focus the entire power of your mind into your hand. Hey! Now we are truly masters of karate. Ha! Huh. So you can chop wood without an axe. Such tricks are useless against the true karate master. You little Diposaurus, Genghis Rex is master of all he surveys. <coughs> oh, you need many more lessons. In the meantime, promise me you will use what I taught you only as a last defense. Oh, I promise. The nerve of that old geezer, Otops, trying to sucker us into more lessons when we already know everything about karate. You won't believe this. The dinosaurs are here in Japan. What? I just saw them with my own eyes. Now to give those pathetic reptiles a real pounding, karate style. <laughs> The picture is called Gorgonzora versus Gogan. The monster Gogan was resting in the South Sea. Peacefully painting picture of the natives. When Navy testing make him angry, so naturally he attacked Tokyo. Of course, Gorgonzora come to the rescue, especially when he learned that his cousins are visiting from America. That's you. Ah. Now, stay on your marks. Right. Hey. Camera. Hey. Cue the monsters. Hey. Follow me. 
stay here. Cut! Thanks, you huh? can go. <laughs> A remote control. My, my, how fascinating. I wonder how it works. <laughs> Something's gone haywire. All we are means in all the world can't stop him. How are we gonna? He's just a machine bonehead. Only way we'll slow him down is to dino ball. Mitsuru-san, is there no other way of controlling that monster? There are the controls in his head, but how to reach them? I'll have to reach them. All right, Rex, drop that control. And what makes you think you can make me? Hi-ya! hi, -ya. hi, -ya? hi -ya? Did they just say hi-ya? Since when do Tyrannos know from karate? A big Dumbo sore. I'll get you for that, you mammal, you. We've got him now. Circuited his plan. <laughs> now to figure out how these controls work and fast. We've joined with you long enough. Now you'll know what it feels like to come face to face with 
A master Karagasaurin! I hope the monsters can be fixed up. Don't worry about them. You cannot keep a Gorgonzola down for very long. I'll say. He's the greatest. He's my idol. He's... Bonehead. He is just a machine. Well, nobody's perfect. Pizza made to your order, or you can count on our famous 30-minute delivery, or you can taste the quality from Domino's Pizza, so avoid the noise. Domino's Pizza delivers. Call now, now. has been paid for by Waifu World Order. When you're in the Waifu World Order, you're in for life. A mysterious explosion destroys an artificial intelligence lab. Adam Hollister is framed. His son, Jack Hollister, sets out to prove his father's innocence, that someone else had caused the explosion and had stolen an experimental computer brain. Merging it with his own brain, he transforms into the master criminal known as Cybron. 
To fight Cybron and his evil Bioborgs, Jack Hollister becomes Sky Surfer 1, leader of the Sky Surfer Strike Force. Crazy stunts. Sliced ice. Air Enforcer. Sore Loser. Surfer Strike Force! BKN will be right back! And now back to BKN! Welcome to Princeton, Jack. Thanks, Professor Zerny. This must be the time flux actuator you called me about. Yes, I began to work on it with your father before the accident. I wanted to share this moment with his son. Watch. The time flux actuator using the Earth's magnetic fields can create a time storm. You're talking about a time machine. Precisely, but with one difference. Within the time dome, I can bring the past into the present. Observe. What you see inside the dome is the past. When the mature plant was a young seedling, the actuator requires an enormous amount of magnetic energy to power it. Normally, this is its limit. When you called me, you sounded concerned. Yes. My assistants tell me there have been strange men around campus asking about the time flux actuator. This is a hologram of our solar system. For the next 24 hours, the planets will be in perfect alignment to bathe Earth in a burst of magnetic energy strong enough to create a gigantic time dome. And you think somebody plans to steal your device and do just that? Yes. It would be a catastrophe if the actuator fell into the wrong hands. And the wrong hands are right here. Chronosaur, replica! <laughs> are in such an alignment only once every 100 years. But the alignment lasts only 24 hours. That doesn't give us much time to stop Cybron. Well, we know he intends to turn back time. The $64 question is, what's his target? Ready, Father. In a moment, the time flux actuator will thrust us into the past. Just long enough to change the future. A future I will control. Conozoid, create a time shield to protect us from the time change. It is done. Let the time storm begin, Serena. Yes, Father. So, now we know where. It's showtime, folks! Surface are trying to bust up our party. I hate party 
traitors. Divided, they are easy prey for the law. All that is about to change, Serena. Soon these gangs will unite under my control. I will enable these petty crooks to become crime lords and expand their power base from the city into a worldwide crime network, changing the course of history so that I will inherit this global dominion of crime in the future. By reprogramming this microchip, the next time Chronozoid creates a time rift, it should remain open long enough for someone to follow. Should? If it doesn't, then it was nice knowing you. He's coming around. Get ready. So far, so good. Let's see if it plays out according to plan. Dress funny or what? Come on, let's get off the streets. Looks like we're in the roaring 20s, guys. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go find Uncle Sai. First, we go shopping, loser. I don't want us sticking out like sore thumbs. I don't know how it happened, but the sky suffers are here. You don't know how it happened? Well, I do. They tricked you into bringing them inside the time dome. Then let them grow old here. It's not quite that simple, my dear. Anyone who doesn't belong here will return to the present when the time displacement ends. My concern is that Sky Surfer 1 will attempt to disrupt my plans. That cannot be allowed to happen. Time to start recruiting. What are y'all dressed up for, lady? Halloween? <laughs> yes, but the trick's on you. Show him, Easel. Come <laughs> on, boys, you've been paroled. Tell your bosses that Cybron's taking over, and he wants a meeting today. I'll say one thing for this era. The food's good. We're not here so you can fill your stomach, Brad. Shh. Listen. So, who's this Cybron guy anyway? All I know is, he said you was to meet him at the old New York Hotel in the top view room at noon. You get the others. I'll try to find out what's going on. Play it cool, Kim. This, this is a private party. There's more than one way to get an invitation to a party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Gentlemen, let me show you the future. Here are your territories in New York. Your various gangs are always at war with one another for small pieces of it. But under my command, all the warring gangs will unite. What you do not know is that financial chaos is coming. During this time, we can seize control of the city. And the nation, crime will rule. Oh yeah? Well, I'm Louie the Lip. Nobody's gonna boss me around. As you wish. Noxious, give Mr. Lip his walking papers. <laughs> get them out of here. Tonight at midnight, you will all sign a treaty to swear your allegiance to me forever. And from that moment on, the future will be ours. But now, please, be seated. To celebrate our new alliance, I've ordered a little fun. I don't think this is going to be that much fun for you, Sonic. Slice dice. Enforcer, we don't know who else is in there. This will seek out the boards without hurting anyone else. me around. What's with the outfit? Are you some kind of spaceman? <laughs> yeah, and 
I'm gonna send you into outer space. Hey, take it easy, pal. We was just kidding. <sighs> I'm one of Cybron's Borgs. I got myself caught just to make sure you goons don't spill the beans about the plan. Hey, we're not stoolies. All right, we didn't tell nobody about the signing up with your boss tomorrow night at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> you boys told me exactly what I wanted to know. It's only a matter of time before the Sky Surfers discover us. Their time is running out. Once the crime boss has signed the declaration of loyalty, it will be too late. At the stroke of midnight, after the signing, the time displacement will end, and the future will be changed forever. A lawyer here to see me? I didn't hire a... Mr. Loser, over here. Hey, Nate. You look good. Real spiffy threads. Like it? It's the latest style in this time period for mob lawyers. Did you find out what Cybron's up to? Yeah, got it all in here. And it's time your lawyer sprung you. <laughs> said that it's going down at Yankee Stadium tonight. Some kind of pact with Cybron. A treaty. We can't let that happen. It's the Bioborgs! It's a bad old movie! Gotcha, Ice Lady!
to BKN! The Warrior, Guts. Superman, Guts. The Maniac, Do you have it? all champions, all perfect scores. Do you have it? Off the aerial bridge, on the track, in the gym, on the field, in the pool, and on the crag. Now, they're head to head to head for the first time. Guts All-Stars. Watch as the extreme competition takes over Snick tonight at 8, 7 central. If I had my way, I'd change my hair. Or to give a kid's meal the way I like it, with no pickles. Sure. Yeah. Now at Burger King, you can collect Save the Animal cards. You can save mammals, fish, birds, and reptiles and amphibians. There's 17 cards in four albums, one with every kid's meal. You can save them in albums. Or trade them with friends. You're right, right, right. Zelda from the very start. I got the heart and smarts to play the part. Took you down with Zelda. Took creeping through with an overhead view. Cause a man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. So I stay on track, collect the facts. Never cut the slack, and I always watch my back for Jack. Took you down with Zelda. Yeah. Took you then I'm the man with the plan. Cause the power's in my head, and the power's in my hand. Took you down with Zelda. Creepy crawlers. They're squirmy and wormy and purple and green. The grossest little creatures that you've ever seen. Creepy crawlers. Fill the monster mold with the colored plastic goop and make a creepy crawler from a yucky monster soup. They're yucky, yucky, squirmy, wormy, very scary, sometimes hairy, squiggly, wiggly, creepy crawling. Creepy crawlers. Gross out your sister, embarrass your dad. You can be a little creep without being bad. Creepy crawlers workshop with plastic goop. July 10th, 2103. Sherlock Holmes left me a message at Baker Street saying he had discovered the whereabouts of the arch-villain Moriarty and could not wait for my return. I readied the coachcraft and hurried off in pursuit. The laser wave sanitation grid vaporizes all falling debris. Not even New Scotland Yard will be able to find any trace of you. Dash it, Holmes. You should never have gone off without me. It's not over yet. Whoa! No victory for you tonight, Holmes. What's this? <laughs> the game ends here.
funny. Hey, Deirdre. Hmm. That's how you do it, love. Good luck with the tournament. I don't need luck. Later. Your partner better show or we win the tournament. <sighs> Chill out. Ronnie will be here. He already is. Why are you in such a rush to lose? We won't, if you don't cheat. When you're as good as I am, you don't have to. Here, this is yours. Nice. Five seconds to airtime. Players, take your places. Coming at you live from the Holocade, it's the fifth annual televised Holocade Tournament. On Team 1, we have April Murray and John Hardy going up against Thomas Moran and Ronald Adair of Team 2. These four champions are about to compete in level 10 of Alienator Attack. Contestants, charge your blasters. Blasters must be recharged every 10 shots. Shoot the targets as they drop. If you miss and your target hits you, your blaster will lose its power and will have to be recharged. We know the rules, mate. Make sure you've played by them. Alienator level 10 commences now. Now lost my best friend, not once, but for the second time. Computer, display list one. No, that's impossible. It can't be. Computer, display list two. Yes, yes, this is more like it. But how could this happen? Inspector Lestrade. Good to see you too, Watson. I'm sorry, but... Come on, no time to waste. I've been stuck all night investigating a break-in at Sir Hargreaves' laboratory. I'm sorry, Inspector. I don't think I can face an investigation on my own. Watson, the best thing for you to do <sighs> is just that. We both miss him terribly, but the wheels of justice must keep turning. He'd want it that way. And besides, I have a need for your particular training. Pardon? I'll explain on the way. Prepare yourself, Watson. His name's Ronald Adair. Oh dear, he's been frozen solid. <gasps> Pretty cold, huh? Whoever this perpetrator was, he's been taking lessons from Moriarty. 
Is he...? No, he's a popsicle, but he's still breathing. Lucky for him, he has a persistent mother. When he didn't answer any of her voice messages, she called us. The doctors say it'll take him 72 hours to thaw out. No harm done. But someone sure didn't want him walking around for a few days. We could wait to question him, but whoever did this would be long gone. Hmm. I assume the door was locked when you arrived and you were let in? You're right. The landlord let us in. How did you know? Eyes and brains, Inspector. Eyes and brains. The door locks from inside and it's well scuffed, indicating considerable usage. Since the door frame wasn't broken, it told me someone had a key. Hmm. Now look at these numbers. Column 1, 118,000. 245,000, 99,000, 325,000. Column 2, 115,000, 195,000, 71,000, 226,000. They mean... they mean... Oh, dash it all! I don't know what they mean. I've been fooling myself. I'm not Holmes. I miss him. You and me both, Watson. Inspector, we found this character snooping around outside. Claims he has business with the Iceman here. Move aside, move aside, young man. I'm a law-abiding citizen. You can't hold me up. Hmm, not good, not good at all. Hmm, he won't be needing these game discs now, will he? All right, hold it right there, sir. I think I have a few questions for you. Oh, me? <laughs> Forget about me. Well, if I'm not needed here, I must be going. Halt! Oh. The computer disc? Well, uh, it's a game disc, uh, is all. The young man likes to play games, he did. So do you. The disc you put into the computer was blue. You're coming with us. Oh, no, no, I can't. <laughs> Much too busy. Here, take your own oh. disc! <laughs> Stop him! <laughs> <laughs> Be on the lookout for an old man in a trench coat, beard, long hair, detained for questioning. <laughs> All area units respond! Blast it! <coughs> Find him! I want a hairnet over this area now! He was a spry one. Exactly. I don't know who he is, but I intend to find out. That's as close as you're gonna get, Yardies. Next time, Yardies. Next time. His door was locked from the inside, yet the young man was somehow frozen. Who could have done such a horrendous deed, and why? That's what I intend to find out. We're going to the Holocake studio. Ronnie Adair couldn't hit the side of a starship from the inside. He's still got the highest score. And I'd like to know how. Sure, that's not just sour grapes. Not likely. I'm a lot better than he is. Ask anyone. The tournament doesn't need cheaters bringing the game down. Well, April Murray is definitely not the president of the Ronnie Adair fan club. <gasps> Inspector! What is it, Watson? I believe we have company. The old man! He was just here! Who said robots were infallible anyway? No, I'm not happy. We almost lost the tournament because of Ronnie. And now I've got to play the final round by myself. Fortunately, I never miss. The other team thinks he cheated. I don't know about that. But I gotta wonder how he got off so many shots. What do you mean? I'm the fastest there is. And according to the game computers, I squeezed off a thousand shots. Ronnie took almost 1,500. That's impossible. You gotta recharge every 10 shots. You mean he cheated? You're the Yardie. You tell me. Look at this, Watson. I found another list of numbers. Huh. What do you make of it? This is odd. The blaster's power control cutoff switch has been bypassed. That's it, Watson. That's how Ronnie Adair cheated. We know the other blasters had to be recharged, but Adair's blaster never ran out of power. He didn't have to have great aim. He could just keep shooting until he got a better score. Murray or Hardy must have figured out he was cheating and put him on ice for the rest of the tournament. 
They must really want to win. You stay here and figure out what those numbers mean. I'm gonna have the lab boys check these parts for trace evidence. Hmm. This all seems much too simple. Holmes always said never to accept your first conclusion, no matter how perfect it appears. Dig, he said. Discover the truth beneath the lies. Oh, lies? Lies, you say? Oh, what do you know of lies, eh? You've been following me, old man. Perhaps you're the guilty party. Me? The guilty party? Good heavens, Watson. Haven't I always told you? <gasps> Eyes and brains, man. Eyes and brains. Holmes, you're alive! Thank heavens! But I thought I saw you and Moriarty vaporize. Think, man. You saw flashes of light, that's all. Base your deductions on facts, never on assumptions. Moriarty was almost subdued when a light from far off broke through the dark and momentarily blinded me. Suddenly, I slipped on a patch of formed ice. Moriarty lunged for me, and we both fell to what should have been our doom. I may have been temporarily blinded, but my mind was still sharp, and by reflexes even sharper. But I had to convince Moriarty's accomplice that I had indeed perished at his hand, and so I hatched a most clever scheme. Alas, I wasn't the only clever one, as you shall soon discover. I presume, Watson, you do realize that one and the same man caused my supposed demise, Mr. Adair's frozen condition, and the theft at Professor Hargreaves' laboratory. I do? They are? Ice, Watson. Ice in July. I slipped on ice. Cryogenic projector was stolen from Hargreaves' laboratory. Connect the dots, Watson. And then Adair was found frozen like an icicle. I didn't put it together. That is because you didn't pay attention to what was plainly before you. The ice I slipped on was created by the cryogenic projector. The blinding light was the projector's targeting light. And it was obviously fired at me by an accomplice of Moriarty. But who that is remains to be seen. Now, do you remember what Adair had on his computer? Numbers? Words? I haven't yet deduced their significance. That is because they are not just numbers. They are the game scores for Alienator Attack. T-78, T for Thomas Moran. Score, 78. R for Ronald Adair. J for John Hardy. A for April Murray. Simple. But what do they mean? That Ronald Adair was not cheating. He wasn't? It's elementary, my dear Watson. Think. Why would a man accused of dishonesty chart out the suspect game scores, as well as inspect the gun he himself supposedly tampered with? Does every criminal need a reason for his actions? There is always a reason if one searches deep enough. For example, what if the man is actually innocent and was trying to prove he has been set up to appear guilty? Now come. Your wax bust! It was just frozen over, like Ronald Adair! As I imagined. We have a fair view from this empty house. Come now, the game is afoot. But who shot at you? An expert marksman. But we already knew that, didn't we? Hmm. Of course we did. You said the glare of light that blinded you came from far off. Excellent. Go on. And Adair's apartment fronted the Thames. Whoever froze him had to shoot from the opposite shore. Not a simple task. But why have we come here? Because our ice-wielding friend should have already arrived. Hold! Steady, Watson. <laughs> Playing with the machines. No more games, Holmes. Are you all right, Holmes? For the moment. What? Follow me! Oh. 
Moriarty took no chances. If he failed to destroy me, his accomplice would do it for him. Fortunately, they both failed. At least for the moment. You won't escape me, Holmes. Moriarty paid too much for me to let you live. Excellent aim! But then you are the best, aren't you? Playing video games is just practice for your real job, isn't it? No! You want me! I am here for you! Then it's over! You're right, Holmes. I don't need this game. But I won't leave without my prize! Hold him, Watson! We're almost there! Well, who is our mysterious attacker? Surely, Watson, there can be no doubt. Who I am no longer matters. You're both being put on ice until I can get out of this dump. Moran? Of course, Watson. He is the mercenary Moriarty hired and equipped to eliminate me. It is rather a compliment in a way. But why would a mercenary play a holiday game? Target practice, of course. And being a professional, his ego demanded his team had to win. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ronnie wasn't that good. Which is why he had to alter his blaster. Here, this is yours. Nice. <sighs> he needed the edge. And, of course, if your ruse was discovered, he would be blamed for cheating and not you. He went home and calculated the scores. He was going to show the rig blaster to the judges, but you wouldn't allow that. I like to win, and I always do. Moran, freeze! <laughs> no, you freeze! Huh? <laughs> Sorry, Moran, the Cold War is over. I hope you'll enjoy playing your games in prison. I found your DNA all over that rigged blaster. I still don't understand one thing, Holmes. How did you know Moriarty was still alive and would still be hunting you? Elementary, my dear Watson. Elementary physics, that is. Moriarty and I fell off the level at the same time. The physics demands both bodies should have hit the grid at the same time. They did? I saw. Remember, I caught the bottom of the level, then dropped a rock to the sanitation grid. Had Moriarty actually fallen, he would have hit the grid long before my rock. That you saw two simultaneous flashes is proof he saved himself, as did I. Now, come. Moriarty is still out there, and this day has just begun. I love video scavenger hunts. Let's roll. Spotted dog, twins, rock group, group head stand. <laughs> Got it. Twins? Oh, I always see twins. And McDonald's? Oh. Oh, Big spotted dog. <laughs> hey, a rock group. Works for me. Red convertible. I always see red convertible. At McDonald's. Hey, we're doing good. Oh, I'm doing great. Look, twins. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we'd find everything at McDonald's. But why don't you say something? <laughs> And think you'd show. You know why I'm here. Hey, bring it on. Magic Johnson Super Slam Dunk Basketball for Super Nintendo. Now you can rent it at Blockbuster. How you doing? How you doing? Take him down, take him down, Jumbo! Yeah, like taking candy from a baby. What? Two out of three, little man. For the best in video games, make it a Blockbuster night. Are you ready? Dude, 
It's not your clothes you need to change. It's your pencils. Yikes! Yikes are the only pencils as unique as you. Yikes are pencils and erasers with outrageous shapes and colors that go straight to the core. Because you can't look sharp with dull pencils. Sorry, Dad. Yikes can't work miracles. They write like other pencils, but they make you go, yikes! I figure there are basically two kinds of people. Those who can't get it together, and those who can't. Now, this may surprise you, but organization is not the result of being born a neat freak or a nerd with an oversized brain. No, organization is the result of owning the track. It's got a security flap, see-through pocket, and lots of folders to keep you organized and together. Face it, when it comes to organization, you either got it, or you don't. The Trapper, from Mead. Mission log. Entry 12.7. Jacob Marlowe speaking. I've sent two of the team to investigate suspicious activity at Integer Electronics, a company which specializes in satellite technology. Hurry! We can't afford to be found here. Too late, worm. They're Daemonite drones. Every one of them. Carabin pests! Eliminate them! Uh. Oh, if I can depossess them! Ah! Oh. Uh. There has got to be a better way to do that. <gasps> Sell it! Heads up! No, Voodoo! Huh? I can handle... Oh. Oh. I didn't mean to... Grab her! I am surrounded by amateurs! <gasps> this place will be crawling with security guards! Retreat! Lightning, don't look! Oh! Are you okay? No! In fact, I would have been better off handling them myself! Ugh. Providence, I, I am not, not happy. The, the mission, mission was, was a failure. failure. You, you said, said the drones would succeed. I said your plan would succeed. This event is but a stone in your path. You can stumble over it, or use it to build a new road. Oh, spare me the metaphors. If the fools had done their job, I'd have this world's most advanced satellites at my command. I could find the orb. You still can. All you need is someone who can gain entry to the satellite ground station. My fellow Americans, as your president, it is my proud... Uh, someone you might say with unimpeachable credentials. Beware the one whose eyes cannot be fooled. Ah, uh, the Caribbean child, Voodoo, yes. Her powers are great, but her spirit is weak. We will take care of her. This is HiSight, the newest generation of U.S. spy satellites. So? That lab the Daemonites attacked is the one that designed the satellite's electronics. This would confirm your theory that Hellspont is searching for something, Jacob. The question is, what? I had hoped to interrogate the Daemonites, but they were allowed to escape. I was trying to help you. If you cannot defend yourself, you are of no use in battle. Sister's got a point, kid. If you can't carry your own weight, you're gonna get left behind. Well, fine! I'm 
I'm used to being left behind. <laughs> Voodoo, wait. Don't you know how important Voodoo is to our mission? Of course. And that is why she must improve her combat skills. Don't you guys realize? Voodoo's an orphan. Her whole life she's been rejected and abandoned. Nice going with that left behind crack. Hey, who knew? What? Hey! Well, next time, think before you mouth off. We're all she's got. <laughs> Sorry. I would figured I'd find you here. Yeah. Madame Ordesky's school of dance. Be a star. This was the last place I felt at home. I should have known better. But you do have a home. What about the Wildcats? All they did was turn my life upside down. I don't belong there. I don't belong anywhere. I've never had a real family. And it looks like I never will. Hey, this is addressed to me. Ordesky's School of Dance. Attention Priscilla Catane. That's your old name. <gasps> Maul, I, I, I gotta go. Voodoo, wait. Voodoo? It's me. I... what are you doing? Like Zealot said, I am of no use. So I am out of here. And don't try to talk me out of it. Man, you are as stubborn as the day we met. You are already at the dance school. Trying to study for my high school equivalency at night. Oh, thanks. I was sure I was gonna fail. You wouldn't let me, though. See these? He gave them to me after our first tutoring session. Hey, I couldn't afford to pay you. I can't believe you kept them. Pris, please don't go. Maul, I gotta do this. For me. See this letter? It's from a private eye in Florida. He was hired to find me by my parents. But I thought your parents... Abandoned me when I was a baby. I can never be sure. The orphanage burned down, so there weren't even any records. Promise you won't tell the others where I went. I'm going to find my real family, and I'm not letting anyone stop me. Not even you. Okay, Voodoo. I won't tell. Thanks. Good luck, pal. I hope you find what you're looking for. Jacob, I am sensing elevated blood pressure. Are you upset? The wild cats are acting like brats. I can't figure out what Hellspont's up to, and I didn't sleep. Why should I be upset? Perhaps because Voodoo has left headquarters without permission. <coughs> what? Or because I am now registering strong Daemonite energy readings near the UN <coughs> Plaza. Any other cheerful news you want to share? Yes. The President of the United States is scheduled to give a speech this morning at the UN. Great Scott! What's with the wake-up call? And where's Voodoo? I'd like to know that myself. Void, get us to the UN, now! Without Voodoo to ID the Bug Boys, this will not be easy. Here comes the president. There. Are those the drones? Yeah. Unless there's an undertaker's convention in town. They see us. Begin diversion. What in the blue blazes? Who are they? Don't fire. We're here to protect. Sort it out later. Fire! I don't think they're listening. Maul, clean up those Daemonites. Just call me the Trash Man. This is Special Agent Higgins. The President is under attack. Repeat, the President is... Hold your fire, Ritter. They're running. Let's get them. That may not be so easy. 
Shouldn't this be us leaving? Good point. Going down. What was that all about? I've got a feeling this whole thing was a diversion. You mean there were other Daemonites in the area? I'd stake my circuits on it. But the only way we'd know for sure is if Voodoo had been with us. Okay, Maul. Where is she? Sorry, Spartan. It's personal. I promised I wouldn't tell. Look, Maul. Promise or no promise, we need Voodoo back, and fast. Oh, Agent Higgins. That was excellent work today at the UN. Thank you, sir. But I have to warn you that you are about to be attacked again. Uh, uh, are you sure? Positive. What are you... Huh? Huh? No! No! Ah! Ah! What <laughs> Okay, girl, think. What are you gonna say to them? Hi, I'm the daughter you deserted? What if they don't want me? We don't take too kindly to strangers. Put them down, you freak! Now! Well now, fellas. When it comes to strange, you ain't seen nothing yet. What are you doing here? Well, nice to see you too. You promised you wouldn't tell the Wildcats where I went. Then again, I never promised I wouldn't follow you. I'm not coming back until I sort this out and find my parents. So? Where are they? Not too far from here. And they can't wait to see you. Are you Orson Kane? Private Eye. Finder of lost souls. You ready to go? Pris, do you think you can trust this guy? What if he's a- I can ID any Daemonite. Trust me, he's just a human being. Don't you get it, Maul? There's life outside the Wildcats, and this is my chance to find mine. I'm ready. Let's go, Mr. Kane. And don't follow me. Have a good trip home. Hmm. That's right, Sam. The vicious assault outside the UN was the work of the Wildcats, a mysterious covert action team. Are they criminals, sir? Or extremists? That information is classified. But I will say that they are a threat to humanity and that they must be stopped. That's all for today. Thank you. Can you say frame up? It's far worse. The only ones who know where the Wildcats are the Daemonites. Are you suggesting that the president has been possessed? Great Minerva! Warblade, see if you can open a channel to Maul. Spartan, Zealot, Grifter, check out the UN area for clues. Let's move. Wildcats? The intelligence boys don't have any record of... David, cancel my appointments. I want to fly to the High Sight Satellite Ground Station ASAP. But, sir... The Wildcats will stop at nothing. Activate Black Razor. But... They're the most powerful anti-terrorist force we've got. Once I get to the high side ground station, no one must get in. Not until I hand, hand over, over control, control of the satellites, satellites to Hellspawn. This is it? It doesn't look... Well, now, now hush, girl. Your, uh, your mommy and daddy are waiting for you. Now, you hurry on in there, hmm? Mom? Dad? It's me! It's- oh! You can't be one of them. I would have sensed it. I'm only human, and these gents paid me real well. What about my parents? No, no. In a moment, all of that will mean nothing to you. What? No! 
Something's just not right here. Pal, you're a hard man to reach. Where's Voodoo? I don't think I can say. Blast them all! The Daemonites have got to the president! You're sure? That's why we need Voodoo here! To find out! Do you know where to find her? No. But I know where to start looking. Mall out. Time I did some research myself. White House Dave Sharp speaking. Listen, Dave, could I talk to the president? Personal matter. Sorry, sir, but the president's just about to leave. All of a sudden, we're flying off to... Uh, anyway, can I say you called? No, no, don't even mention it. I'll uh, try later. Go ahead, Spartan. We're in an alley near the UN. I'm getting a heat reading. It's a stasis pod. Inside a trash bin? So, while we were kept busy, another team was in here nailing someone close to the president. Jacob, has Maul located Voodoo? He's working on it, I hope. Which way to the town records? Th that computer, in the corner. Man, is this thing an antique. Warblade would bust a gut. Those filthy, lying monsters. <laughs> All right, you bug-loving, double-crossing stooge. Where's Voodoo? Oh, put me down! <laughs> Looking for me? Carabim fool! What'd you do to Voodoo? The life form called Voodoo had no idea of her telekinetic potential. Now I have unleashed it in all its lethal glory. Air traffic data shows that the president is flying to the high site satellite ground station. So it looks like Hellspawn's sending another drone to finish what he started at that lab. Come on. Hellspawn possessed the President of the United States just to blow up a ground station? It's not that kind of sabotage. He's searching for something, and he needs the satellites to find it. Hey, nobody's gonna frisk the Commander-in-Chief. The President hands Hellspawn the satellite system, and no one will know until it's too late. <laughs> Why do you not attack me, Oaf? Has your fear so paralyzed you? <laughs> What'll I do? The only one who can depossess Voodoo is Voodoo. Voodoo, listen to me. Silence, Carabim. You cannot reach her. My control is total. <laughs> Remember these, Pris. They're the flowers you gave me. I want my friend back. All the Wildcats want you back. Mom? No! Ah! Impossible! Nobody can depossess themselves! Well, just call me nobody. Can't breathe. Must escape. You did good, Pris. Wh what about my parents? I'll bring you to them, but first the Wildcats need us. Is Black Razor ready, Captain? Ready for anything, Mr. President. That's very reassuring. Hey! What the? Ah! <laughs> the door is jammed. Are you all right, Mr. President? Uh, yes, yes, I'm fine. This must be the work of those subversive wildcats. No sweat, sir. We'll stop them. Okay, we have to stop the president before he takes over the satellites. Void, fly to Merv away by remote. We're under attack. Can you get it started? If it's got a motor and tires, I can hotwire it. These guys are good. Uh-oh. That's a black razor. You know these guys? Let's just say we crossed paths. Come on, cats. Yeah. 
Move aside, human. Wildcats, use non-lethal force only. These men don't know whose side we're on. Hey, I'm not even sure I know. There. A small improvement courtesy of Lloyd Hellspond. Mr. President, the Wildcats are attacking. Annihilate them. I mean, do something. Obstruction team, move in. What form of trickery is this? I can't cut this many! Wildcats, pull out! Voodoo, I am glad to see you. I'm glad to be here. Well, what are we sitting around for? Success! <laughs> Too late, Wildcats! Hellspont controls the satellite system. Not for long. <gasps> Oh, man. This could take time. We don't have time. <laughs> what? Bad move. That circuit board must have been set to self-destruct if anyone messed with it. Uh-oh. Maul, catch! Spartan, give me some sky. I am registering a massive explosion at the satellite ground station. Enough sitting on the sidelines. Void! Get me there! Now! What is that thing? Jacob Marlowe? He knows the president? Campaign contributor. Very big. The circuit board self-destructed. Why did you not foresee this spellbinder? Patience, Hellspont. Eventually, you will find what you seek. But when, Providence? When? This is what I found when I went to the library. I'm sorry, Pris. Did... the Daemonites do this? You were just a baby when your parents took you sailing. The boat hit a reef and sank. When the Coast Guard found you, you'd been tied to the mast in a blanket above the waterline. Your parents didn't make it. So they died, saving my life. The Daemonites just used a bit of the truth to lure you into a trap. Forgive me for having been so rough on you before. You are truly one of us. Sorry I ran out on you. Now I know you are all my family. Then let's go home. You would have been proud of her. Fun fishing? You bet. Hey guys, breakfast! Let's go, Grandpa. We got it. Come on, this isn't funny. I want my Kellogg's corn pops. Oh, like sweet popcorn. And everyone's gonna eat pops except me! Kellogg's corn pops is part of this complete breakfast. I gotta have my pops. Who did this? Comic caps, dust for prints! Clean this room. Bonkers fingerprint kit is free with two proofs from Kellogg's corn pops. These prints are bonkers. Uh oh. Punish me! Gee, that's much bigger. You think Bigfoot's big? Little Caesar's Big Big Cheese is bigger! Two big pan pizzas with more cheese, more pepperoni, 24 slices, or get a family-sized bucket of spaghetti with meat sauce. So now it's the Big Big Bucket or the Big Big Cheese with free crazy bread for eight eighty eight dollars at Little Caesar's. Pizza, pizza. The evil Vac Man versus the intergalactic backpack. Rebel heroes from the planet Vax. Stretch them 
can use their back powers to stop Backman's nasty plans. Grappler grabs, Claudius crushes, and Humongor's wide. Back at you, crater face. Backman and the Intergalactic Backpack, each sold separately from Cap Toys. Come on, macho man. You can always get out of the ring, but the rock is extreme because there's nowhere to go. Nowhere to go? Not the cage! Oh, yeah! Land side! Oh. Falling rock! Oh. Oh. Yeah! <laughs> Meet the Lord oh. face! Oh. What do you do for beefy, spicy, extreme excitement? Say it! Say it! Slap it to a Slim Jim! Those jittery geniuses who for decades have dazzled us with death rays and thrilled us with the ever-present threat of total and totally wacky annihilation. Yes, mad scientists. Some are angry, some are insane, many are both. But almost all of them have come out from their castles and their subterranean bunkers to converge here at the annual Mad Science Fair to show off the twisted fruits of another year's misguided labor to a world that shuns and fears them. Well, it looks like the fiendish Dr. Mugmung has arrived with inimitable style. Scratch it and you'll pay dearly, valet person. Uh, Dr. Mugmung, doctor, what's that you pulled up in? I call it the catbird seat, Brian Pinhead. <laughs> Weird. And what else are you bringing to this year's competition? Wonderments and atrocities, Brian Pinhead. Mung Mung, you oily little sellout! One of these, all of you, spit shining your prosthetic limbs and whitewashing your liver spots for this wretched back padding smarty party! I take it you won't be attending. The true mad scientist does not make public appearances. He does not wear the Hello My Name Is badge. He strikes from below, like a viper, or on high like a penny dropped from the tallest building around. He has only the one purpose. Do bad things to good people mid science! So Tick, what brings superheroes to the fair? We're guinea pigging for our pal, J.J. Vatos. He's gonna switch our minds with his new mind-switching machine. <laughs> How cool is that? Tick, Vatos told us not to talk about it. Uh, <clears throat> Brian, we're not supposed to discuss the full nature of the experiment. It, it, uh, it, it's kind of a, um, uh, well, it's kind of a secret. Well, can you tell us anything? Uh, well, Arthur's dating JJ's daughter. Tick! Chrome Dome, I want you to go down to that science fair. What? I just got finished telling you about my boycott. Chrome Dome, if what the Tick said is true, then Vatos has finally broken the mind transfer barrier, and he has a working device right there for the taking. But Herr Shippengale, why? Look at my face, Chrome Dome. What do you see? Uh, I see a chair. Exactly. And who else in this room is, shall we say, unsatisfied with the body fate has seen fit to hand them? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I really cannot believe you, Tick. I am not dating Carmelita, okay? We're just... Oh, you're just mad because you haven't kissed her yet. I don't want to talk about this. Come on, man! Make the four-lipped butterfly! Okay, doke <laughs> Vitals look good. No signs of central nervous system damage. Looks like the transfer was a success. Mm-hmm. That's great, Daddy. Really. Pumpkin, you seem distracted. Lab rat for your thoughts. Oh, Daddy. How long were you and Mom dating before you kissed her? Why, I asked her to marry me two minutes after I met her. Of course, those were the old days. Everybody was worried about polio. But then again, these are the 90s. I say kiss the boy. He's probably just shy. 
Good heavens! This place is enormous! Well, Vatos is in booth 41. Check. Okay, here's 167, 166, 165, 160. Fire! To safety jump! Uh -uh. Exhibiting my new invention! Room temperature fire! Huh? Look! The marshmallows aren't even toasting! They remain at comfortable 68 degrees! Hey, cat man, what's the point? <laughs> don't worry, you have nothing to fear from Tang Tang. He's only tasting you. But likewise, don't resist, for he can crush you quite easily. The tongue is a very powerful muscle, and Tung Tung is all tongue. I am Dr. Mung Mung. Now release the nice mothman Tung Tung. Here is an individually wrapped slice of processed cheese. There you are. <coughs> now come on, Arthur. We can't fool around all day. <coughs> Look well, the floor of the mad science fair is buzzing with rumors about the mind transfer device J.J. Vatos plans to unveil today. I'm joined now by Dr. Emmett Peely, one of the early pioneers of the mind transfer field. Professor Peely, you bowed out of the MT race several years ago. Why is that? Uh, well, Brian, I had a little setback. Let's just say I was in Africa playing a game of musical chairs with my mind and... Uh, when the music stopped, I was sitting in the zebra chair. I see. Well, why couldn't you just switch back? Well, for one thing, I hadn't quite perfected my device. <laughs> also, I can't find my body. So what are you working on these days, Professor? No, oh, you know, lion repellents, lion alarm, lion proofing. Oh, she kissed me once. <laughs> yes, we were in Mexico. Right on the cheek. Tick, just leave me alone. Your target area, however, will be the lips. Oh, there you are, boys. We gotta get backstage. I'm presenting next. Hi, Arthur. Oh, hi, Carmelita. Kiss her. Come on, Arthur. Shh. Stop it. Have you ever needed an extra pair of strong, masterful hands around the lab? Or an extra body to handle the heavy lifting? Well, sure, we all have. Then let me present... Can a man! A man in a can! He does whatever you want. He can bench press about 240 pounds, and after an hour, he disappears into a cloud of fragrant potpourri. Uh, say, Professor Vatos, you've, uh, tested this thing, right? Oh, sure. I, I tried it out on a couple of lab rats, like, five minutes ago. Rats? What, that's it? You're gonna go from lab rats straight to humans? Shouldn't you throw a few monkeys in there or something? Oh, yeah. All right there, all right there. Oh, that's great, that's great. He also comes in sandalwood and pine. Okay, let's go, boys. Uh, couldn't we run a few more tests, Doctor? I mean, I... Don't worry, Arthur. Dad's a genius. Well, um, good luck. Kiss her. Kiss her. Come on, man. Go on, Lita. Kiss the boy. Maybe next time. Oh, hey. Oh, hi. How you doing? <clears throat> the first step towards world peace is understanding. As the saying goes, you can't really understand a man until you've walked a mile in his moccasins. Now, imagine how well you can understand a person if you were to walk the same distance in his feet. Well, that's what mind transfer is all about. Ah, warm, fuzzy, nice, nice. What good is science if no one gets hurt? Okay. Here goes nothing. E. Cat! Arthur! 
It's me in here. I, I made it. I'm an Arthur Knot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Daddy! You should all be ashamed of yourselves. What is your word peace and your moccasin walking and your potpourri? You're not mad scientists. You're a bunch of hippies! Stop right there, Chrome Dome! Ah! Man, how dumb are you? Trying to be all villainy right under the nose of the mighty tick! Yeah, yeah, you sure got me. But you are not exactly yourself now, are you? <laughs> That's new. Arthur, my body is a weapon! Use it! Oh, right! I don't think so. I'll stop him with Cannonman! Arthur, how do you get anywhere with these wings? I fly, Tick! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Arthur! Leap, man! Leap! All right, all right! Daddy! Uh, I'm okay, Pumpkin, but we've got to get my device back. Boy, you're a fragile little thing, aren't you, Arthur? Yeah, I know. So stop banging me around. And you get a little gassy when you're under stress. All right, all right. Let's just split up and find Chrome Dome, okay, Tick? Okay, me. <laughs> Hand it over, Chrome Dome. <laughs> you lack your father's flair for pacifism. All right, you win, Miss Ratos. Here is the device. <laughs> Chrome Dome! <laughs> Where is it? No, no, no! Tick, I'm Arthur! It's me! It's Carmelita! Carmelita! You got it! Eh? Oh! <clears throat> oh, oh, yes! Well, I... yes! There you are, Pumpkin! And you have my device! <laughs> I had a girl! <laughs> Mong Mong! Curb your pink abomination! Yeesh. Yeah, put that thing away, Wiggy Tongue Man! <laughs> tongue Tongue tastes something sour. Well, I guess we should find Arthur and get you boys back in the right bodies! Yeah, he's probably out joyriding in my sleek blue chassis. One uh, detail eludes me, Miss Vatos. Uh, just how did you dispose of the nefarious chrome dome? Uh, a girl's got to have her secrets. Yes, secrets. The mother's milk of an evil genius. What are you saying, Mung Mung? I'll tell you what he's saying. That's chrome dome! He switched bodies with me. Hey, that's Dirty Pool. Oh, will you? Go ahead, Arthur. Hit me if you can. Hit your beloved Carmelita. I can't. I can. Lita, wow, you're, you're great. Oh, well, it wasn't any... Come on, Pumpkin, kiss him. Arthur, make your move, man. Kiss the girl. Kiss the... Yeah. Very well, then. Let me invite you all to a swap meeting of the mind. Well, that worked.
worked out nicely. <laughs> Well, it sounds like Chrome Dome has returned. <laughs> no! The tick! No, no, Herr Shippendale, put your heart back in your chest! It's just your loyal Chrome Dome, and I've got the device, too! Chrome Dome? You gave me a, <clears throat> quite a start. I'll say! You jumped right out of your slippers! <laughs> I feel like a million bucks! <laughs> I ran here in eight minutes flat! And I picked up a dump truck. Woohoo, this is some kind of body here. Hmm, yes. Not conventionally handsome, but. Um... I can taste the floor. I can taste everything. Quickly, no time to lose. Uh, who are we? J.J. Bato's here. I'm Carmelita in Cano Man. I want my zebra back. Oh, oh, uh, that feels good. And I remain as always, Dr. Mung Mung. You switched with yourself? Lucky duck! <laughs> oh, gentle tongue tongue. <laughs> he weeps, for he has but one small tongue with which to taste an entire world. Curse you, Vatos, you brought this upon us. Don't look at me! I brought Canaman! Listen, everybody! We've got to stop Chrome Dome before he gets the chair face! If that villain gets control of the Vatos machine... Then nobody will be able to look at themselves in the mirror ever again! Come on, people! Giddy up! <laughs> well, this is really quite a coup! Oh, yeah! But, uh, Herr Chippendale, now I... now I got your body. And what's wrong with that? I'm a fit man of half your age. Yeah, but you got a chair for your head. I mean, you're really a freak. How am I even talking? Come now, Chrome Dome. Now you can have anybody you... Oh, this is... <laughs> this is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing up there, Arthur? I can taste your back. <laughs> Please! Chair face! You're hurting me! Well then, sit this one out! Spoon! Body pirate, you face the tick! <laughs> no. I face a zebra. You face the tick. That's it! You hand over the Vatos machine right now, or I'll... Oh, man. <laughs> well, well. Aren't you a monstrosity? But do cheer up. You're just in time to see all your hopes for a normal life destroyed. You... You... Chair face, you double crossing fiend! I'm sure you'll all be happy in your new bodies. Mm? No! You can't do it! Chrome Dome, let go! Come, maneuver 11Z. Chrome Dome, please, you're making a fool of yourself. <coughs> hey, handsome! Huh? <laughs> Give me that, you twisted creep! Learn some manners! What? No! Oh, why, 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 why? Okay, now, how we doing? Listen, I'm not in love with the zebra or anything, but in about five minutes I'm going to pot Paris. so could you... Oops, <laughs> sorry about that. Now, who else isn't in the right body? I'm me. I'm me. I. Uh, Carmelita. We made it. Gadman, uh... yeah, yeah. what are 
are you doing? <laughs> I hate today. Hey, Arthur. Weiss Corky writes, Dear Tick, how many stars are there in the universe? Well, I'm told by preeminent counting experts that there are as many stars in the universe as there are grains of sand on a beach. This may seem confusing at first, but not when you consider the many works of that even-handed minx we call symmetry. Look around, Weiss Corky. All kinds of things are symmetrical. Horses, prom dresses, hydrogen molecules. Why, even you!